sorry, folks. Back on the Boss Man Show, front of the show. New guy in Las Cruces taking over that program, New Mexico State Aggies. It's my man, Jay Hoot. It's a Hoot on the Boss Man Show. Jay Hoot, what's up, my man? I love the background right there, the mountains behind you, man. I appreciate it. That's actually, uh, that's our campus right there. Uh, beautiful. So, but no, I appreciate you having me on. It's always good being with one of the best and, uh, you know, talking a little bit of uh, Aggie basketball today. I hear that, man. I, I must ask you, man, uh, I know you've been at St. Houston a long time, man. So for you and your family, what about the opportunity to present itself to you to say, hey, this is my time to make make this move and come to New Mexico State and help train this program around and help get, get them to build what I build at St. Houston here in Las Cruces? It wasn't an easy decision, by all means. You know, but like you said, um, JR, just being somewhere for so long, you know, 19 years in one place, you get you get so many friends and – you know, and then you just kind of get adapted to that, the same office and, you know, the same drive to work every day and the same drive home and, you know, and, and then just people. I think people always make a difference, right? You have so many friends and and people that almost you call family now. So it wasn't an, an easy decision by all means, but I just thought when the opportunity presented itself, um, you know, New Mexico State has just always been known as a basketball university. And, um, you know, the people here just love basketball. And we just we just felt like it was time, uh, you know, to go out there and, you know, just kind of stick your foot in the water a little bit and see what it was like. And, uh, you know, the move so far has been amazing. These people have been just, you know, open armed and, um, you know, we're just excited to be here. And, and it's a challenge. The challenge will be it'll be tough, but we're excited about the challenge. And you all are going to Conference USA, which means I'll see you. You'll be playing, hopefully, the last yeah. Just get us all stated real soon. Middle yep. Tennessee, which is down the road from my house in Nashville, like I told you about. So I'll get to see you see you think, three times, West, West Kentucky as well. So it's like I, I, I see places to catch you play, and I will be cheering for you because you my guy. I, I see you close, coming close by, right by my house. I love it, man. I appreciate it. We'll, we'll have an opportunity to grab some lunch or some dinner for sure. And We'll get you over there back behind our bench somewhere. So um, excited about the new challenge of a new league as well. You know, even if I would have stayed at Sam Houston, uh, Sam Houston going into the Conference USA. Um, but, you know, you just get to play a lot of different venues. I, I've never been to Western Kentucky and never been to Middle Tennessee or Liberty, uh, you know, any of those places. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I know there's some great coaches in that league and uh, some tremendous talent and tremendous teams. I can tell you a secret about Middle Tennessee. It's cold in that gym. Oh, man. <laughs> for, for me to Tennessee State, you're playing it, down there. That yeah. gym is historically cold by design. Oh, that's, that's it's not like good. It's like ice box down there, man. We're going to have to wear man. we're gonna have to wear quarter zips on that one, huh? Yes. <laughs> no yes, polos. Man. No polo quarter zips for real. Like, no polos. That, cord, man. Like, it's, it's, that gym is always – Freezing cold in the middle of Tennessee, then we're at Murfreesboro, man. So, yeah, that's a little tip for me. I appreciate that. I'm going to remember that on, when we pack on that trip. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, you know, I love the staff you hired, man. You got to hire the high quality staff. You brought some people with you, Sam Houston State. To talk about hiring a quality staff, having good people around you who you trust, to know how you want to run things and help push your vision on the players and program in general. Yeah, I thought taking the job, one of the most important things, just from some of the things that we were going to have to deal with from last year, uh, I just thought, you know, having a solid staff was going to be one of the the number one things right off the bat. And, you know, and as you said, JR, just to bring a couple of a couple of guys with me that were familiar with me, uh, one that had played with me, but played for me before. And then obviously hiring, you know, a guy that was on my staff last year and then you know, bringing Kenneth Mangrum back, who worked for me back in 2013 and 14. Uh, yeah, it was just a start. And then Robert Guster, I've known I've known him since back when he was a player. We've known each other 25, 30 years. Um, and then Zach Satembri, who's a young and up-and-coming guy who's, a you know, extremely hard worker and who's been in your over in your area in the neck of the woods, you know, as far as a lot of recruiting background. So uh, I'm super excited about our staff. Um, you know, they've so far, they've done a great job of bringing in some good talent. You know, we've got 10 signed right now. We've still got three to go. Uh, but I like where we're at right now. And, you know, we just got to finish just like anything else. JR, you got to finish. I noticed you got three guys on your roster from Georgia, 
two from my area as well, Metro Atlanta area. So talk about that, be able to tap in here and get guys from here, get it come come out there, man. And I feel like it's gonna be good. You got Georgia guys on your roster, and you playing coming to a conference where you play get the they come home too and play against their hometown team per se at Kennesaw State. Yeah, uh, you know, I think a lot of that just had to do with our assistants and their kind of their relationships with some of their people, but also just, you know, me. I mean, we're always going to recruit the South real hard. And uh, there's so much talent in Georgia. You know, these guys are, and I think we actually have maybe four on our roster from Georgia. Um, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's it's a hotbed for sure for basketball and for just athletes and talent in, in, in general. Uh, you know, Mississippi, all those areas are going to be areas that we stay in and continue to recruit just like we did in Texas there. Um, but but I'm excited about those guys and, you know, looking forward to getting them out here for summer school and get started here in the next two weeks. No doubt. And you know what, Jay Hoop, man, being in Conference USA, it's really the USA for real, but you, you got to go to Virginia, <laughs> it's Georgia, yeah. Tennessee, Kentucky. It's really the Conference USA for real. This name fits for real because you all are very much spread out over this, this country, man. But but it gives you people's eyeballs on you. You can get in the homes that have been footprints off, like you said, man. You can recruit nationally because of how national your conference is, how far it spans. Yeah, last year, you know, out of 32 leagues in the country, Conference USA was ranked 10th. Um, and we we played in a great league in the WAC last year, and it was ranked 11th. So, yeah, I think there's going to be some familiarity with, you know, like the teams that you're playing um, just due to like, you know, recruiting and being in those areas, as you said before. Um, but, you know, you look at our league right now, as you said, the footprint you know, the only drive we're going to have is to UTEP. Other than that, we'll have to fly almost every trip. And so I'm assuming I haven't seen our conference schedule. It'll come out next month, but I'm assuming they'll put us with partners. And so, like, for example, when we come over your neck of the woods, we'll stay and play two or three games while we're there uh, before we come back. So um, it'll be a lot of travel, but the WAC was there was a lot of travel in the WAC, too. And uh, yeah, I think just, you know, JR, I think those days of having the old, you know, Southwest Conference where, you know, you played Houston and Baylor and Texas and everybody just went bus to bus to bus. I think those days are probably far and far and uh, between and gone. No doubt. I, I totally agree with that, man. I, I like, I can only imagine. I, for, for me, I remember how long the bus trip was to Eastern Illinois for us. That was our longest trip on the bus, Tennessee State. How That's far was that? About five hours. The That's not too bad. To yeah. Illinois, yeah. Yeah. And that's why they don't want that's why they, they don't want to lead OBC quite easy because it's able to save them money for his busing. Yeah. Because personally, I want to be in, in, in the swag. It makes more sense than the swag right. for us. Right. But I know why the OBC is a more is really a bus lead. Even yes. with even with Lindenwood now, it's still five hours to St. Louis and past hours to St. Charles, not that far away. So it's like, so I understand it. But now, now, now for them, what's your little noise would be the worst trip now to Macomb, Illinois. It's going to be the worst trip for Tennessee State now. Yeah. You know, when we were in the Southland, you know, it was a bus trip. It was a bus league. And, um, you know, we never had to hardly get on an airplane except for in the fall. Um, but you know, it's convenient for us and, you know, we'll have a lot of charter trips, uh, probably, you know, the long ones and the ones that are difficult will charter. And, um, you know, it's just a it, it's it's a it's a great challenge for sure. Uh, you know, and again, you're playing new teams, new coaches, um, you know, be new scouting reports. And uh, I know there's just a lot of a lot of really, really good coaches in that league. And, uh, you know, we'll have to be ready to go by then for sure. No, I can tell you a quick story. The funny thing for us was we, we were bust the Martin same day. Murray State, same day. Eastern Kentucky, same day. Moorhead, same. We wouldn't stay in overnight, nowhere. We was going to go on a bus trip on the same day. The Holy plane. cow. And come back the same day. And you went up. We thought say, and you went up. Man, y'all probably had to leave like at five or six in the morning just to yes, get there and get a, and get a, get a meal. Early game. That yeah, was get a game. meal yeah, in man. there. Yeah, we wow. went there nowhere, but Tennessee Tech, MTSU, Austin P, those all same day bus trips will take you come back. These guys have no idea how good they have it nowadays, do no, they? No, they do not, man. You don't. You get to grind on the bus, all sweaty back, man. It was man. No shower. Eat, 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 no, eat I was gonna say, 
I was thinking to say knowing that not everybody's going to take a shower either. So, yeah. and then you know how it was back then. You're putting that cologne on a funky body. <laughs> Axe spray. <laughs> yeah, little that. Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, go yeah. hug, hug, hug mom and dad. I, I, uh, yeah. You got to yep. have no clue about that, man. No clue about that. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Yes. Yes, indeed. As you see, you have, you have guys coming on campus, man. So how's it been getting to meet these guys, man, and talk to them as you build a relationship with them? Then get to have them on campus. I know when I played, when I was on, when I was at Tennessee State, I played my best when I was around all my guys. Here in Atlanta, I wasn't focused. So I know when you're with your guys, man, it makes you lock in, more, hold you more accountable, man. So I feel like you build that, that, those relationships with, with, with your teammates during this time of year when the university come hits. You already been through something together with them gases you're running, them sprints you're running, them weightlifting you're doing. So how, how happy you meet these, meet these young men, man, and build a rapport with them, but have them there real soon. Yeah, that that's a that's a really good point by you. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've got two here right now and uh, ate dinner with them last night for the first time. And, you know, it's two guys from separate. In fact, it's two two of our guys that actually competed against each other last year, and now they're on the same team. So. Uh, it's going to be fun that, you know, that's going to be a lot of fun. The hard part, JR, will be that we've got 13 of them. We have 13 new guys and only one guy on the team has played for me before. So there's going to be a lot of uh, getting to know each other and then getting to know me and, and our style and our philosophy. And But that's the fun part, man. That's why we do this is just trying to build a team, build a culture, build a family and putting it all together. Uh, they're all starting to come in a little bit. We've got another one coming in today. Uh, a couple of this weekend and then hopefully by you know by next week or so we'll have all all well we've only got 10 signed right now so hopefully we'll have 10 here by then and uh and who knows we may sign two or three more by then and have them all here but I'm just excited to start working you know that's what you want to do is get on the court uh get out on that court and start practicing and just kind of start seeing what we what we have and you know putting it together and starting to mold it into a team it's my dad always tell me, Jay, who Jay, he loved when he had got a chance just to put pieces together. He he had to kind of figure out how this all fits, meshes together. He says that he sells the fun part of him as being a coach. And I can see that too, trying to figure out that puzzle who would, of who works with who. So with this, when we get him on campus, Jay, who it's going to be a lot of just individual work. We're going to try to really see what you have and then kind of assess from there with them being all new guys. Yeah, we're in a really weird predicament because – we're behind and we have 13 new guys and we've got to build, we've got to build that team, but also, you know, we got to put our stuff in normally JR, when you have five, six, seven, eight guys back, you know, you have a little more time and then the, the older guys can teach the newer guys, but we're kind of going to all be learning together. And so, but we also have to understand our season is the longest season there is uh, you know, everybody else's seasons are about half of ours. So you don't want to go too much too soon and then wear, you know, wear a guy out or get a guy injured, you know, something that may be long, long-term injury. You don't want that. So, you know, we're going to take it easy when they get here. We'll start some individual skill development and some conditioning, uh, lifting, just some things to kind of get them in and see what, you know, like how we want to do things, how we want it ran. Uh, but, but there pretty soon after that, we're going to have to start putting in our defensive philosophy, our, our terminology, our language, things like that. Uh, and then, I'll be honest, really, right now, I'm not positive how we'll play offensively. Uh, we'll get up and down like we always do, but like X's and O's wise, I think the last two or three people we sign will tell us a little bit about how we're going to play. No doubt, because I feel like, you know, you and I both know this defense trap. We get a defense right. We, we can have a chance to win some games because you, like the Denver Nuggets, we saw an example of holding people not scoring the ball. That gives you opportunity every night. So it was, I feel like yeah, it was really, fun watching Denver play. You know, I mean, yes. everybody gave joke jokish, you know, all the the pub and and Murray and and they deservedly earned it. But to me, the biggest thing about their team was watching them communicate on defense and fly around and rotate. You know, they had a lot of interchangeable parts, and you know, and Jokic is so smart. You know, he knew how to play with space and, and how to be in the right positions defensively. But to watch those guys fly around and switch and do all those different things, they were hard to score on. And, uh, you know, I I, I just, I, I, you know, I, I think you're right. I mean, defense wins championships. We know that. Um, and and I'm, I, I feel good about what we've put together thus far as far as defensively. I think we have a lot of interchangeable parts. We have some guys with versatility. 
And I think we'll be able to really get up and pressure and do the things that we've always done here defensively. And the shocker, Jay Hoop, is this, Jay Hoop. Leanna Hawks beat the Denver Nuggets twice this year. And yeah, and so, and, and yeah. a certain person didn't play those the games we beat them. <laughs> yeah, basketball is a weird game. I mean, you know, I think you know, like, maybe more than any other sport, basketball is all about how you're playing in the time at the time and at the moment. Yes. And, you know, you want to, you want your team to get better and better and better as the year goes on and, you know, just gradually, you know, gradually get better. But at the end of the year, especially tournament time, that's when you want to play your best. And you also have to be lucky. You want to be lucky at that point in time in the season as well. No doubt. I'll ask one more for you, Jay. Who is this man? Food down there, man. How's the food in Las Cruces, man? How's, oh, wow. how's your options been so far, man? <laughs> Amazing. You know, um, there's so many things that are great about this place. You know, I, I was, you know, when you come and play at places and you've never spent time here, then you don't really know, right? You just, um, you come in, you stay at a hotel, you go to the gym and then you go home. So you don't get to see actual city and you don't get to see the the culture and the things like that here. And man, this city is like 120,000 people. It's bigger than anywhere I've lived in the last 30 years. You know, it's not as big as where I'm from, but once I went to college, you know, this place is bigger than those. And so there's a lot more things to do, but food is tremendous. They have a lot of really, really good food places. Of course, we have the authentic real Mexican food here. Um, you know, you, you, you learn real quickly here. You're either a red or a green or a Christmas guy. And uh, you got to pick one of those for sure. And everywhere you go to eat, they're going to ask you that. Uh, or you're going to have to tell them what you want. But but the food's great. There's a lot of options here. Um, you know, my family got out here about three weeks ago, I guess. And uh, we're still we're still in the process of finding a house and trying to sell ours back in Texas. Um, but here they go year round school. Uh, so my my kids, my children, they start school here in about a month. Uh, so they're they're looking forward to that start in their new school. And uh, they both have my daughter's already started her uh her summer volleyball. So they're practicing like five to eight every evening. And then my son's just playing tennis every day and getting a chance to work with a lot of different coaches, uh, playing in a lot of different tournaments. And uh, and my wife's being a mom right now. She's been amazing uh, in this whole process and doing a great job of just taking care of our, our family and, you know, find, trying to find us a home. And uh, we're really excited about this next chapter. Uh, you know, this has always been as you said, Jr., this has been a basketball place and a place that guys have won big here, and uh, we're just excited about trying to get everything from last year erased and just moving on and moving forward. Well, I hear that, Jay. Well, you know, I'm gonna be in your corner all the way through, man. I what I told you, I'll be behind the bench chair for you when you come out this way to play because they, they got it, that, that can happen. So I'll be right there for cheer for you, my brother. I appreciate you, man, and I always appreciate you having me on. You're the best. Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much, man. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you, man.